Hi everyone and welcome to my sewing corner. This is episode three of sewing a couture dress at home where I'm taking you along the journey of me making a couture dress and teaching you different aspects along the way. So in this episode, it's all about the underlining, making sure it's on grain, thread tracing it by hand, and even up to basting it to the main fabric. So we're gonna do everything dealing with the underlining in this video, and I'm gonna give you a lot of information. It's very helpful. So I have already completed everything that I'm going to show you in this video, and this is what it looks like. I have my underlining all stitched onto the wrong side of my fashion fabric. And then if you look at it from this side, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but I have all of these lines so I can see all of my seam lines from both sides. And I'm ready to cut this out and begin actually putting the dress together. The things that you're gonna need for this step in the process is the actual underlining, and you're gonna to wanna to have it closely related to your outside fabric. So I'm using a silk brocade, and I'm going to be underlining it with a silk organza. You'll need a measuring tool, such as a measuring tape. Pins, you can use ball head pins or dress pins. Just make sure that your pins are sharp. Sometimes I'll use my pattern weights just to hold everything in place if things are slippery. So these are just big heavy washers and I arrange them. They help out a lot. And then you're gonna need some silk thread. And the reason you're using silk is because it's easy to remove once you start sewing this together on the machine with machine stitches. This is going to be easy to pull out because you're gonna be stitching right on top of these basting lines and tracing lines that you do with this. So you want something that breaks easily and pulls out easily. So if you try and break a polyester thread just like that, it's gonna be a lot harder. I'm gonna get right into the tutorial now to show you the process. And I'm starting with laying out my silk organza and putting my paper pattern pieces to make sure that I know which layout is gonna be best before I start pinning everything to the fabric. Now I'm just showing you the placement of where I'm going to be tracing my pieces. I'm going to put the salvage of my organza in a straight line and measure from the grain line to the edge of the salvage. I'm going to make sure that this grain line is exactly the same throughout the length of it. Once I've done that, I can pin everything down into place and begin getting ready to thread trace. The pattern. You can see this side is done. And here I'm going to get a length of thread and slip that onto the needle and knot one end of that. So I'll begin doing my tracing exactly on the edge of this pattern piece, which is where my seam line is going to be. So I'm marking my seam lines by putting these thread tracings in. You can see that I've done that on this piece already. And I overlap on the corners for clearly distinct corners. Even extending over the darts and marking the grain line. Okay, so now that I've transferred all of my markings onto my silk organza, I am ready to join the fashion fabric and the organza together, the underlining. So what I'm going to do before I start cutting this out is I want to get my fabric prepared. I have the salvage side, which is straight, and then I have the cut side, which may look like it's cut straight, but it may not be. Now the way that I made sure that it was straight was to undo the strands of silk by just pulling them out until I got to the point where I wanted it to be straight from and I kept pulling them out and you can see right here it wasn't even at all. I'll show you a close up in just a second but some of these are short and that's the ones I pulled out first and then the long ones came down. And there's a difference of 
about an inch and a quarter from this point to this point. So it's not straight at all. So I had to make that straight because the grain is very important for aligning everything at this step right now. So get this fabric all prepared. You're gonna want to get a little swatch and see how it presses and how it steams and how it's going to affect this. And if everything is all good, then you treat the whole fabric. I gave everything a, a quick steam just to get it ready and flat. And then I'm going to cut out these pieces and lay them out and pin them so then I can stitch them. And you can see right here, the wrong side of the fabric is up and the right side of the fabric is down because we're gonna be putting this on the inside of the dress, not the outside. So we want the inside of the fabric to be facing us. So let me get everything cut out and pinned and I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. Now I'm gonna cut out my pieces, leaving extremely generous seam allowances. I didn't even necessarily keep a consistent seam allowance because it doesn't matter at this point. But do not trim very close to your markings. Now you're going to align your fabric on two edges to make sure it is perfectly straight. And then you're going to get your underlining and lay it within the fabric, keeping in mind if you have any directional pattern to make sure it's pointing in the right direction. And then you're going to be measuring from the grain line to the edge of the fabric and making sure to keep that consistent. And if you have any pattern to match, you're going to want to do that at this point. Being meticulous in this step is totally worth it. So just measure thoroughly. Now you're going to be pinning the grain line into place. This is really the only section that I pin into the main section of the fabric. Usually I pin in the seam allowance. So I'm just double checking my placements and then I'm going to pin around the outside. And here I've noticed an error and I'm pondering over what to do, which I will be explaining to you. Okay, so once I got everything pinned, I realized that I made a significant error and I want to explain what that error is and show you how to avoid it. So I'm working with a limited amount of fabric and it has a pattern and it has a direction. So you could say I picked a very complicated task. So what to do in this situation, I was trying to just use the fabric as best as I could and I wasn't thinking about matching the front and the back. I was only concerned about matching the front two pieces and then matching these four pieces. But what I realized was the levels of the skirt front and back were not the same. And so if you would have looked at the dress from the side, the levels of these flowers wouldn't have continued in the same path. And they're slightly different, so it would have been noticeable. So I wanted to fix that because I want all the, as many points as I can match on this dress to match because it's a really nice sign of quality. Now, I have limited fabric, so what I had to do was shorten the skirt in order to get three pieces laid out in this row on the same level because I'm missing fabric right here because of the way it was cut. So I couldn't raise the bodice and I needed to lower all of this and there's a notch cut out of that side. So what I had to do was adjust the hem of the skirt. So you can see that on all of these skirt pieces, I went back and I thread traced, I think it was two and a half inches shorter on all the pieces 
And this one is where it really matters because as you can see right here, my old thread tracings fell off of the fabric. And my new one gives me about an inch and a quarter of seam allowance, whereas this one, I didn't have any fabric at all, let alone seam allowance. So that was my solution, and I lined everything up from the bottom and worked my way up. And all of these pieces are already basted down, but this one is left to baste, and I'll show you how to do that. But another thing to mention is the repeat in this pattern. Right here at the corner of the center back where the zipper will be on the top of the skirt, this point needs to match this point because these are the seam lines and when they're stitched together, you want the fabric to just look continuous like there wasn't a cut made there. Now, there is a match point right here because the pattern block is about this big, a rectangle. But if I had moved these closer, there's a flap down at the bottom of the skirt that I would have brought my seam allowances too close together. So I had to move it to my next repeat. And then the next repeat to match to this point is exactly this far. So I can't bring this any closer for this fabric. So once I have these matched up, then I just work my way out because this is the point I want to match for the back. So the lines match each other and it's gonna look continuous. Then for the front of the skirt, I wanted to match the center of the dress and this point with this point. This one was easier than the four pieces, but you get the idea. Now I had all of these pieces pinned and I pinned them in the seam allowance as you can see right here because you want to protect the interior fabric and you don't want to take a chance of your pin going through and pulling the thread. It's going to be really hard to fix later on. So pin into the seam allowance and then you're going to re-stitch on all of these lines all the way through the fashion fabric and the underlining. So that's what I'm about to do on this one. And I'm gonna bring you over and show you closer what that looks like. Making sure everything is on a nice straight grain. When you're basting, you don't wanna pick this up. You just wanna baste along with it laying flat. Just continue doing that all the way around on all of the same lines. You can skip this center grain line. All right, now everything has been basted together. Our underlining and our fashion fabric are now functioning as one fabric together and the underlining is supporting our fashion fabric. So now I'm going to cut this out and baste it together and try it on and do just a quick fitting before I put in my final stitching to hold this dress together. That's going to be in episode four so keep a lookout for that. If you haven't subscribed to my channel you can subscribe and click the little bell alert next to it and you'll be notified when I post an update and any new videos. Down below this video, you can give me a like or you can send me a comment. And also in the description box, there are links to some of the things referred to in this video and tools that I used if you're looking for them. Until next time, go get creative and make an underlining for something that you love. Bye.